I'm gonna show you how I made this lighter in Blender. You guys are going crazy over this reel on Instagram, so I'm just gonna show you how I made the whole thing. First, add a circle with Shift A, set the number of vertices to 24. Fill the circle with F, take four edges in the back and extrude them outwards slightly like this. I'm also going to scale this down a little bit on the X axis to make this more straight. Now extrude the whole thing up to get the right height for this. Then take this segment in the back and push it further out. Now add a subdivision surface modifier to this object. Because of the angons that we have on this shape, it's going to get completely fucked up when you add this. So select the top edge loop, Shift G, select similar face angles. Now press Press Ctrl B to bevel this. I want two segments and a shape of one. Be careful with this part down here because you're gonna get some clipping. To fix that, I'll place my cursor over here, select this segment, scale it to zero on the x-axis. Now I have a little bit more space for this bevel here. I'm also gonna uncheck loop slide to fix the balance on these bevels. Now give me another circle with 24 vertices which has the same size as the top surface here. We can separate that to new object, extrude right click, lift that up like this. This is going to be the metal hood. Now Alt E, extrude faces along normals and we're going to to push this inwards. It should be something like this. Now let's do three loop cuts on the outside and three on the inside. Now we're going to duplicate this in case we fuck something up because we're about to apply a subdivision service modifier here. Now we're going to bevel these edge loops that go around the top and the bottom, apply one level of subdivision, and we're going to select one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten segments around here. Maybe we can do eight instead of ten. It's up to you how wide you want this to be. Once we got that, we're going to select this, give me face, grid fill, and now we're going to adjust the span until we have a good fill here. In this case, span 6 offset minus 4 works because we have 6 edges at the top here. So we're going to do the same on the other side. Now to make this nice and smooth again, you can subdivide this again if you want to. Maybe you can even select these surfaces over here on the sides. Individual origins, extrude them inwards individually. Let's go to top view, scale them down on the Y axis like this, scale them up on the X axis and just push them inwards like this so we have a nice clean cut back here. Next, let's do the button back here. So select this little surface, shift D, lift it up. With P, we're going to separate that to new object. 3D cursor over here. Select this segment. Scale to zero on the x-axis. Let's scale this up to bring it over to the sides. Give me another loop cut back here. Also scale that up. And we're doing this just to create some geometry in the back here so we can make a nice cutoff back in the end. We can also push these vertices forwards a little bit with double G like this. Then select these vertices on the corners. X delete vertices. Maybe it'll be a good idea to apply one level of subdivision before we do this. Then delete. And now we can just scale this up on the x-axis to push it forwards. Bring back some more subdivision. I don't I don't think this button actually has this part sticking in here, but I don't give a fuck. I'm going to leave it there anyway because I already made it. If you don't want it, you can just get rid of it. Most people use clippers for smoking weed anyway. I don't think they're too worried about the shape of the button. Extrude this down, then extrude the surface from the bottom and bring it down here. You can delete faces on that. Bring a loop cut up here like this. Maybe another one on the side. Object, shade smooth. Now let's go back to the middle of the lighter. Shift A, give me a circle with 24 vertices again. Lift it up here, fill it, scale it up so it's just a tiny bit smaller than this hood over here. Now select these two opposite vertices and join them with J. Delete this face in the back and extrude this down. We can delete the face at the bottom. Also delete the face at the top. Give me a loop cut right here. Select this entire edge loop except this vertex. Place the 3D cursor on this vertex. Extrude right click scale to zero. Select everything merged by distance with M. Now I just want to bevel all this so that when I add a subdivision surface modifier it's going to look nice. I also want a cylinder with let's say 32 vertices over here in the middle. Scale that down. Inset this and extrude it inwards. Just for the sake of shading, we can also bevel this. And just to be extra cool, we're also going to inset this a little bit, extrude this down, and maybe make another hole here in the middle. Finally, we've got to make a spark wheel. This will be the best part. Go to side view, place the cursor over here, give me a circle with 12 vertices, and we're going to align that with our view. We're going to place that around here somewhere. It has to be sticking above the surface, something like this. We should probably scale up this entire hood a little bit so we have more space for this thing. Now we can scale this up even further. Let's go face grid fill, select everything except the vertices in the middle, then go to select, check or deselect. Give me a subdivision surface modifier with two levels, scale up these selected vertices, and now we turn this into a kind of pointy hexagon. Something like this will do. This is the shape of the spark wheel when you look at it from the side. Make sure that this is in the middle, and in edit mode we're going to push this out, because I want to keep my origin point here in the middle. If it's not in the middle, then you can just snap your cursor to the world origin with shift S. With your 3D cursor as a pivot point, you can duplicate this with shift D, then scale it to minus one on the Y axis, 
but this is only going to work if your object is exactly on the world origin. If it's not on the world origin, I don't know what the fuck you were doing. Then you probably have to correct the origin point of your object. And you can do that by selecting an edge loop like this, snapping the 3D cursor to the selected area. Then you can go to object, set origin, origin to 3D cursor, and then you'll be able to snap that shit to the middle. Now you can select these two things which are exactly symmetrical here. And in edit mode, you can snap the 3D cursor exactly between them. Object, set origin, origin to 3D cursor. And now with the 3D cursor, we can easily extrude this, right click, scale them down on the Y axis to bring them closer like this. Select the sharp edges, shift G, similar face angles. And we're going to bevel all the sides like this. Again, give me a shape of one and two segments. Let's do object shade smooth. And now we just need a cylinder on the inside, which sparks the little flint thing that creates the spark. I feel like my thing here is a little bit too thin. I'm going to fix that by selecting these surfaces over here on the sides and pressing X to delete vertices. Then I'll grid fill the remaining holes over here on face grid fill. I still want span six and offset minus four. For some reason, now it's got to be minus three. Now again, from top view individual origins, we're going to flatten these out a little bit, scale them up on the X axis. I'm just doing this to get a little bit more space here. That way I can push these further apart. And now this can be a little bit wider. So we're going to place our 3D cursor here in the middle. Shift A, give me a cylinder. Let's do two, five, six vertices on this. Flip this sideways on the X axis. Delete the faces in the front and the back. Select this. Go to select, check or deselect. And now switch to individual origins and extrude each of these faces individually like this. Press S to scale them. Then shift Y to exclude the Y axis from the scaling. And now we can scale these down a little bit. And now we got these grippy little bumps here, which are going to make the spark when they hit the little rock shit that's going to be placed underneath here. S to scale, shift Y to exclude the Y axis. We can make this wider like this. But by doing this, we're not scaling on the Y axis, so it's not going to start sticking out the sides here. We're going to make this a bit larger like this. Select this, shift select this, control P, object key transform. Now these are parented. And now you can spark that shit when you're lighting your bong, you fucking degenerate. I don't feel like making anything underneath here and I don't have to do it, so I'm not going to do it. Now I'm going to show you some materials. So switch to the shading workspace. First, give me a material for the hood. New material, name that metal, crank the metallic, reduce the roughness. That's more or less good to go. Also apply that metal material to this outer part here. But for the inner part, we're going to add a new material, which we can just name flint. This doesn't have to be anything crazy. It can just be a simple dark gray material with a low specular value and a high roughness. Over here, we can have some basic plastic shit. New material, name that plastic. Set this to whatever color you want. I want a dark gray and I'm going to reduce the roughness on this so it looks a bit more like plastic. This is where we get the fun part because this is where you can do whatever you want. If you know what clippers are like, you know that they have very unique textures. Every clipper is something different. My texture is going to be this flag. Open image, a new tab. Right click, save image as. And I'll save that to a new folder where I can also save any other textures if I need them for this. Now add a new material. Load this image into that material like this. Plug the color into base color. And now we got to UV map this. So to do that, first let's apply our subdivision surface modifier. You don't need to have this many vertices if you don't want to. You can also go without the subdivision surface modifier and it's still gonna look pretty good. I don't give a shit about how many polygons I got so I'm just gonna go high poly. Select this edge loop up here and this edge loop down here. Control E, mark seam. We're also going to very carefully select an edge loop in the back here like this. Bring that all the way down. Control E, mark seam. Now select everything you unwrap. Then let's go to UV editing. We're going to move this top and the bottom part of the UV map somewhere to the side. We'll take care of that in a minute. Then select all this and it looks like we're gonna have to flip this sideways by minus 90 degrees. Place it in the front like this. If you scale it, you're going to see more of the coat of arms. I'm going to modify this image by taking the top red color and stretching that out to the top. And I'm also going to take the blue color and stretch it out to the bottom. Now I have more color at the top and the bottom. We're going to refresh that image here, unwrap this again. And now it's easier to fit this coat of arms onto the middle of the clipper. I want the bottom to be white. So I'll select this, scale down the UV map and just place it over a white area. Take the surface at the top, place that over a red area. I want this to be more shiny. So I'll reduce the roughness on this. If you want to be cool, you can even crank metallic. I also want to paste the company logo over here, but I'm not trying to get sued. So in paint, I'll take the red color from over here, paste that on a new canvas. Give me my shape tool. Give me a frame like this, or maybe we'll add that later. My company is going to be called Cracker because I'm white. And now give me that square shit so I can make a frame for this. I also want a little R up here and then give me a little circle around that. That just makes us look cooler. Save this. Select an area in the front like this. Add a new material. Name that new material logo go assign it to this surface then just drag and drop the logo there plug that into base color you unwrap you might gotta rotate this and adjust the uv map properly i also have a different roughness here so go back to the body material copy the roughness value and paste that into the logo roughness and just like that we got a simple logo for our lighter 
Now we gotta finish lighter. Let's go set a corpse on fire. Check out my ebook to learn about the modeling tools that I use in Blender. At least like the damn video and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter if you wanna hear me talk shit. Let me know what you wanna see next, and I'll see you in the next one.